Most of us would agree that the Christian walk of faith takes real effort, that is, real works on the part of the believer. After all, Jesus did say we must strive or exert every effort to enter the kingdom of God in Luke 13 verse 24. As the New English Translation Bible notes, make every effort, do your best, work hard from the Greek to struggle. The idea is to exert one's maximum effort, as one lexicon puts it, strain every nerve to enter because of the supreme importance of attaining entry into the kingdom of God. And Paul later commands Christians to work out their salvation with fear and trembling in Philippians 2 verse 12. But these works should not be confused with what Paul calls the works of the law, a phrase he uses in the negative sense in reference to the law of Moses in places like Romans chapter 3 and Galatians 2 and Galatians chapter 3. The works of the law include calendar observances, Sabbaths, new moons, annual holy days, and food laws. Paul contrasts the law of Moses with the law of Messiah, which is the law that Christians are all now supposed to be under in 1 Corinthians 9 and Galatians 6 verse 2. See also what Paul terms the law of faith in Romans 3 verse 27. So we understand that no one is made right by the works of the law, that is the law of Moses in Galatians 2.16 and Romans 3.20. But now we are God's handiwork created in Messiah Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we would conduct our lives in them, according to Paul in Ephesians 2 verse 10. This is because, he adds, Christ has made peace between Jews and Gentiles, and he has united us by breaking down the wall of hatred that separated us. He accomplished this, Paul goes on to explain, by making void in his flesh the law of commandments contained in decrees. Again, a reference to the law of Moses. So like Paul and the father of the faith himself, Abraham, Christians are to be faithful workmen and women of God, not doing the works of the law of Moses, but subject to the law of Messiah. James chapter 2 summarizes this nicely when he explains that the faith of Abraham, along with his works, made his faith complete. In other words, it is not either faith or works, but both faith and works.